Well, hello and welcome to the show. I'm glad you've joined us this week. I'm gonna be working with Janie and her horse. This is uh, her barrel horse, and he's worked out pretty nice for her as a barrel and pole bending horse, but she's run into some confidence issues with him here lately, and we're gonna deal with that today on Discovering the Horseman Within. Now the sun is rising slowly On the mountain you must climb And the trail that takes you closer to the source And you dream about the moment When you leave it all behind And climb up on that one true horse That one true horse The perfect partner built to ride That cannot be denied You would search forever Just to have the chance To take a ride on one true horse I'm Gonna take a ride on one true horse So Janie the first thing we want to do is talk about some of the problems you've been having, okay? So we want the audience, you and I have talked about this a little bit, but we want to kind of recap it for the audience. Tell us some what he does. Um, tied up, he pulls back. Um, he's a little nervous about and spooky about obstacles around him that he's not familiar with. Um, I'd like to get me and him together on the confidence. In a lot of cases, we might try to fix those problems on the ground first but you have a lot of issues that are happening under saddle as well. I think all of it leads to a confidence issue in general where this horse doesn't understand that he can trust you. This horse doesn't realize that you're the leader. If I had this horse here for the next week, um, I would ask you to put him in a direct pull snaffle. But this is the bit you ride him in all the time, right, correct? Mm -hmm. So I'm actually going to have you go ahead and work him in this bit. It has a lot of lateral bend to it. It has a lot of direct pull. So I'm going to go ahead and have you ride him in this bit. And what I want to do is, first of all, give you the exercises you're going to work on with him. Okay? okay. So what I want you to concentrate on is working on some bending exercises and softening exercises going forward. Okay. And I want to get this horse moving his feet and listening to you. And I want you to get a visual picture of what you're going to be doing. And then regardless of what he does next, you're going to continue doing that exercise. Okay. So I want you to think about this. There are really two reasons why a horse spooks. One, he's young and genuinely scared. Okay. Two, he's older and he has learned that that's where a release comes from. What I want to do is take away the release. What I want to do is change this horse's emotions. Every time something scares him, I want him to work harder, okay? I want to cause him to move his feet and, and work more frequently. What that will do is every time he spooks, if he sweats, pretty soon he's going to say, gee, that's not much fun. It cost me a lot to spook. I'm not going to spook anymore, okay? He's going to make that decision on his own. What I want you to do then is to start riding this horse around and I want you to just start picking up on some simple bending exercises that you would do at home, okay? And as you ride him, I want you to work at a trot. Okay. And then what I'm gonna do is step in at certain points and try to cause a commotion. Okay. And try to, to spook him just a little bit. When that happens, I want you to stay focused. And if he spooks, you're going to stay focused. Okay. and you're going to continue to do the exercise. This is what I believe is the real root of your problem, is that this horse believes his safety is completely up to him. This horse believes that the only way he stays alive is by being alert and seeing the problem before it happens and getting the heck out of Dodge mm -hmm. before it kills him. Start with a figure eight over there, kind of on that half of the round pen. Okay. What I'll do is just kind of wait until I think the horse is pretty comfortable and pretty relaxed. And I'll start out pretty slow and just see if I can cause a disturbance. It's my firm belief you can't cover enough things 
to, to get this horse over everything that might scare him at some point in his life. So instead, I just want to change his emotions. If I can teach this horse that no matter what, he needs to pay attention to what she's doing, and that that's where he'll find his release, then in the long run, that's going to be enough. So I just start off with a pretty mild little step towards him and kind of jump and kick a little dirt, and he flinched the first time, and now it doesn't really bother him, so I'm going to go on. That's not enough for me to really uh, be very excited about, so I'm going to walk over here and grab my lariat and see if I can't do a few other things and build up. Now what I could do is go get a cannon, right? And fire a cannon. That might scare him. <laughs> that might scare him, okay? And I don't happen to have access to a cannon, but my point is I don't want to get Janie hurt. I'm not trying to scare this horse out of his mind and cause a wreck. I want to build something that starts allowing him to get better. So I'll just kind of fool around here, and if I don't get a response, I will get a little bit bigger tools. I can always go to bigger tools. The goal is not to create a wreck that we live through, okay, and prove that we can do that. The goal instead is to show this horse where the right answer is and start teaching him so that he follows that from now on, okay? And drive him forward. Just by changing up what's happening, okay? Now, he's not really over the rope, is he? I don't care if he gets over the rope. I kind of know what his reaction is. Janie knows what I believe her reaction needs to be. So I'm going to move to something a little bit bigger. Okay, now Janie, why would you be watching that ball? Because <laughs> I'm scared. Okay. No, no uh, I guess I'm thinking you, about it too. You, you want me to went, watch him. You went from riding over here and riding really nice and paying attention to your horse to, oh my gosh, there's a ball. Okay. Okay. That, yep, the second I did that. you went to, oh my gosh, there's a ball, Jake went, hey, there is a ball. Yeah. And it's coming our way. Okay. Now he didn't spook very bad. But a lot of times, it's important for us to remember, a lot of times our horse doesn't even know there's an issue until we tell him, right. okay? How is he supposed to maintain his level of confidence if, I don't if the second something happens, you go, what was that? Okay. So, I want you to ride, I want you to pick it up to a trot, and I want you to stay focused on what you're doing. One simple exercise, but I want you to stay focused I don't care what I do, you stay focused. Okay. Don't pay attention to this ball. Figure eight or around? Yep, or? just figure eight. Okay. Yeah, I like the change of directions. It gives the horse something to think about. When a horse is just going straight, that's easy for him. Keep. Now, don't watch that ball, ride forward. I'm spooking. All right, ride forward. Ride forward. Pay attention. Good, good, good. Excellent. Just, just ride through there. Good. Now reach Should out and I... bet on him. That's good. Oh boy. You, you just don't even confess there's a ball here. Okay. Okay. You don't even know there's a ball Should here. Should I get after him? <laughs> ride forward. Don't get after him. Okay. Do, you're not looking to get after him. Just ride forward. Okay. Ride forward. Okay. okay. You're not trying to spank on him. Yeah. I didn't You're not know trying to I... get him in trouble because here's what's going to happen. He starts to spook, you spank on him with your legs. What's that going to cause? Mm -hmm. Pain. So should I just kind of squeeze on him you with use, my... Use your legs, but use, and use your spur, but use it with a different thought process. Okay. You're not using it in a, I'm spanking you way. It's yeah. just a cue. Ride forward. Pay attention to what we're doing. Ride forward, pay attention to what we're doing. Well, I okay, That's okay, keep him moving. Okay. Keep him moving, you direct his feet. Don't let him stop, you redirect his feet. Redirect his feet if you need to. 
Keep him focused on you. This is a simple exercise. Yeah. It's not earth shattering. Keep him focused on you. Good, reach out and pet on him, that was great. Good boy. So is it important how he responds to the ball? No, it's important how he oh. responds to you. Yeah. Okay. Okay, there you go. What I'm looking for, right back where you're going, is keep your pattern in mind. You're going to be running a pattern when things happen to this horse. He has to know you're going to take care of him. The faster you move his feet, the more you're going to control his brain. Good. All right, that time it actually hit him. And he spooked about one third as much as he did the first time I kicked it back there. Okay, so again, am I interested in getting this horse to where I can bounce the ball off his head? Nope. I really don't care about that. I am interested in stopping that hesitation. Good, just right on through there. Just right. See him reach up and kick that ball? Right him forward. Good, okay. Now at this point, he's like, hey, I can handle this ball. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna wanna move and do something different. Okay. All right. I'm gonna incorporate some of our apprenticeship program students. They're here for three weeks, okay. and we're gonna take this horse out into the arena, and I want to incorporate some of them in helping us get this horse over some of his problems. Okay? okay? So go okay. ahead and give him a break, pet on him, and we'll move out there into the larger part of the arena and work on that. That's what we'll be doing when we come right back on Discovering the Horseman Within. What we've done is we've moved into a bigger part of the arena, kind of opened the area up. I've brought Janie in here. We're going to work in a little bit larger area, and we're going to increase the level of stimulation. I don't like the phrase uh, desensitize because to me the most, the most important thing I can have is a sensitive horse. That's what I want. So I don't want to take his sensitivity away. Instead, I want to teach him to control his emotions. But we're going to have a lot of stimulus going on out here, different things that would typically cause this horse a problem. What have we done to really change this horse? Nothing. What we've done is change the way Janie thinks. If we can change the way Janie thinks, then we're gonna change the horse. So I brought in a couple extra riders. I've got another three or four of my students back there who are just going to intermittently walk through here dragging junk, literally junk. Anything they can to just kind of spook and bother this horse. So, um, and, and what we really wanna work on is Janie staying focused and giving this horse, or that horse in this case, giving Jack the confidence and stability of a confident rider. That's what Jack needs, is he needs to know that she's got him, that, that he's 100% comfortable and safe in her hands. That's what he needs to know. <laughs> All right, so Gail and Hannah, I want you guys to work out here just working your horses. Work on anything. If they spook because of things going on, great, work through it. I want a lot of things happening out here. Okay, those of you that are back here ready to play ball, okay, I want you guys to keep it moderately controlled, okay? So I want kind of a level, a semblance of control, but I want you having fun with it. You guys back there, when you come through doing stuff, you just come through doing it. All right, Janie, you're gonna go to work on that same exercise you were working on, just a nice figure eight exercise, and I'm gonna ride along here and kind of disturb you myself and visit with you, okay? Okay. Keep, keep in mind where you're going and what you're doing, okay? All right, just stay focused on your horse and your horse alone, okay? So when all this other nonsense starts to happen, you don't have time to pay attention to that. All you've got time for is your horse, okay? Keep him focused, just ride him through there. Now, not all of you at home have this menagerie of junk and people at your disposal. But the point is, take this horse someplace and get him seasoned. 
Okay, ride him forward, ride him forward with confidence. Let go of that saddle horn, reach up, grab that rein, and ride him forward with confidence. There you go. When you go to that saddle horn, and I understand as a barrel racer, that's a part of your, your frame as a rider. But here, right now, when you go to that saddle horn, what you're doing is going, oh Lord, I hope I survive, okay? Yeah, right. I want you to get rid of that, oh Lord, I hope I survive mode, and just go into, yeah, I can do this. And did you see what happened when you dropped that saddle horn and went to that rain? That it horse came amazing. forward and said, hey, where do you want me to go? Because uh -huh. all of a sudden, now let's go back over here. Let's, okay. let's take him back around over here. All of a sudden, he felt the shift from you. He's no longer out here just surviving. He's actually starting to ride the way you ask him to ride. All of a sudden, he's going, hey, I've got a, I, I've got a purpose, and I know that you've got a plan, okay? So just roll him back into that fence and take him the other way. Oh, <laughs> okay, so have a little fun with him. Thank you. All right, now take him up alongside here and cross that bridge, add more into it, okay? okay. I want lots going on here. When you go to cross that bridge, I want you to look down the rail and know that you're going someplace. Oh boy, he says no way. You take him up there, when he looks, release. Hey, whoop, when he looks away, drive forward. When he looks, release. Drive forward. Release. Drive forward. I might have to borrow, <laughs> use my horn, Ken. I don't It's okay. Know. Drive forward. You don't need your horn. Okay. You don't need your horn. You're controlling your horse. When you go to that horn, you give up control. Okay. And you confess that he's going to dump you. Okay. You ride up there. There's nothing wrong with grabbing the saddle horn. There. Get a hold of that rein. Get a hold of that rein. There's nothing wrong with grabbing the saddle horn once the wreck has started. But if okay. you grab that saddle horn ahead of the wreck, what you're doing is admitting there's going to be a wreck. Okay. Take him right through there. That's perfect. You don't want to admit there's going to be a wreck. You want to confess that you have control. Okay, ride him through there. There you go, just, just, just keep both reins up there and direct that horse. You're doing good. Ride him through there. Okay, cautious. Ride him through there. Good, good. You, you guys were perfect. Just No, no, what's your hand on that horn for? Ride him through there. Okay, one rein, bring him around. Yeah, this is a lot. This is a lot to do to Janie. The horse is fine, okay? You did good riding through there. Good job, Janie. That's a nutty deal that you just went through there, okay? That was pretty extreme. And you riding through, now get your hand off that saddle horn and ride with that confidence. Take that horse through there. Do you see the difference in him when you do that? When you yeah, change, it's now please understand, I'm great with you grabbing the saddle oh, horn no, when you need it. I understand. I... But, but don't grab it until you need it. All right, good. Step on that tarp if you get a chance. Yeah. Try to jerk it. Now, now wait a minute. Stop. <laughs> because the moment, you can go back and get your tarp. The moment that I said step on that tarp, your hands went from control to, to survive. Yeah. Okay? You've got to stay in that control mode. You've got to stay in that, hey, I've got you, buddy. Because yeah. you know what? This right here is enough to scare the hair off of any normal horse. Yeah. Okay? This is enough to cause any good horse a serious problem. Mm -hmm. So when you take a hold of him and you say, hey, come to class, I've got you, then all of a sudden, it's no longer a big issue. Okay? But when, Jane, uh, Jane, I wanted you still dragging the tarp. I wanted her to step on it while it was moving. If you don't mind, please. Just drag the tarp, you bet. Yep. So keep your hand, there, good job, Janie. Good job, this old horse is doing good. Now you guys on the ground do well to keep a heads up to everything that's going on. Now, this is Come almost, on, almost an unsafe scenario because I've got so many people and so many things going on. It's an unrealistic scenario. You wouldn't ride your horse in this position. What I want you to see is the difference Sorry. in Janie's horse when she rides and when she goes to the horn, okay? Yeah. This horse does have a fear issue, but a lot of that issue will go away. This horse, as soon as things started, he spooked, and then he got over it, because I said, hey, we haven't got time for that, we're busy. And as soon as Janie starts going, hey, we got work to do, I mean, look what you got going on here. They'll just take him right back and go right back to work. Ignore that ball. You got, you got 10 people playing kickball, you've got somebody thrashing foam noodles, somebody dragging an orange tarp. You've just got junk happening. 
and yet that horse is absolutely in the middle of it. When we started, where was he? He was out here on the outside edge. Now he's walking through the middle of it. He could care less. What's the big change? Do you think he had in that seven minutes to 10 minutes, do you think he had time to get over everything out here that might scare him? No way. Instead, what happened in that seven to 10 minutes is that Janie gained the confidence to take control and stay in control. And that's the most important thing. That's what I want people to realize. When you go to this horn, you give up control. And then the horse is left out in no man's land. He's left out there going, what do I do? What's his response? Get the heck out of Dodge. So he takes off and he hopes you come with him. But that doesn't always happen and it's not always a successful ending. It's really important that we maintain that control. Okay, Janie, come on over here. Good job. Thank you. Your horse just handled that really good. Now, that's a first step. We're a long ways from saying, gee, he's absolutely, utterly bomb proof. Yeah. But you got to see the difference when you actually let go, okay? So the biggest thing I can do to help you and your horse is not change one little exercise for him, but change a thought process for you. Well, again, as is always the case, even with my horses, the majority of the problems we run into are really us. The horses, when they're out in pasture grazing, have very few problems. We connect with them and right away things start happening. And if we stay in control, then most of those issues start to go away. And that's what we really have talked with and, and worked with Janie here on today. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as we have. And until next time, may God bless the trails you ride. For more information about Ken McNabb Clinic's appearances and products, visit KenMcNabb.com. One true horse, the perfect partner built to ride. One true horse, a bond that cannot be denied. You would search forever just to have the chance to take a ride on one true horse. Gonna take a ride on one true horse.